Hi friends and welcome to this video series on the subject of strength of materials. In this subject we will start understanding the entire thing by simple stresses and strains and in this particular video I will introduce the term stress to you. Now stress is the most fundamental of the topic to be understood in order to understand the entire subject. Okay, let's get to it. Now I have written a very uh, big word over here which is load. So to understand what is stress or how the stress is produced, we must understand what is load. Okay, and more importantly, we have to talk about the external load which is applied externally onto the body. Okay, so when you apply external load onto a body, what happens? What is the result of this external load? The result of this external load is deformation. Now deformation to engineers is not a very good thing to happen because every engineer would not want its material to be deformed. So we will categorize this deformation into two parts. We will talk about the elastic deformation and we will talk about the plastic deformation at the later stages in this video series. But this video will focus on understanding stress. Okay, so in a very high level understanding, you apply external load onto a body, that body gets deformed. Now no body wants to be deformed, it resists that deformation. So that resistance per unit area, that resistance is provided by the material of the body. Okay, that resistance per unit area is called stress. So if you look at it, uh, you know, in a diagrammatical fashion, and then we'll write down the uh, mathematical relation for it. So let us say this is one section of the body. This is the other section of the body. Okay, so we've just cut the body into half. Okay, let us say we have a external load P acting at two ends of this body. Now, after understanding stresses, we need to understand the types of loads. Right now, I'm just telling you that load is something which produces deformation. The deformation can be of the size, the, def the deformation can be of the shape, okay, or both. So we'll go into those details one by one. Right now, let's understand this. You have a body which is being applied by these two loads or this load at the two ends of the body. Okay. Now what happens is this load on the left side, it's, it tends to pull the body towards this side and this load will tend to pull this side onto the right side. Okay. Now this body will not want to be pushed in or to be pulled in both the directions. So what will happen? The internal fibers of this material will start resisting this load. So all these fibers are actually trying to resist this pulling force. On to this side also, you will have the fibers putting up a resistance to resist this pulling force towards the right. Okay. So let us say if I take the summation of all these elementary forces, you will get summation FR that is the resistance force, that is the sum of the internal resistance forces. Similarly, I'll have the summation over here also, sigma fr. So sigma fr is the summation of these small elementary resistance forces produced by the material fibers to these external loads. All right, so the mathematical formula for stress which I denote by a Greek letter sigma. So stress is always denoted by sigma. Remember this. So sigma is this resistance force per unit cross section of this body. So this would be equal to sigma fr by a. So this is how you will calculate the value of sigma. Now if you look at this entire body, it is under equilibrium. It is under static equilibrium it is not going anywhere it is staying put equilibrium 
okay this means that this load or more importantly let's start with the other way around this summation of the internal resistive forces are equal to this external load this means that p will be equal to sigma fr so i can put sigma fr equal to p so this will become p by a now this is the formula that you will find in almost every book but this is how you understand it this is sigma is not p by a p by a is the resultant of this entire body being in static equilibrium so the formal definition of the stress is that it is the internal resistive forces per unit cross section area of the body okay so this is how we denote and we define stress cut karna ek minute sir dobara se na यहीं से करना पड़ेगा सो पी इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा एफ आर सो दिस इज दू नो फॉर्मूला दैट यू वुड सी इन ऑलमोस्ट एवरी टेक्सट बुक सो इट इज नॉट पी बाय ए इट इज एक्चुअली सिग्मा एफ आर बाय ए वेयर दिस बॉडी बीइंग इन स्टार्टिंग इक्विलिब्रियम क्रिएट्स अ सिचुएशन लाइक दिस सो दैट वी कैन पुट पी बाय एके सो दिस इज हाउ वी मैथमेटिकली डिफाइन स्ट्रेस no more importantly when you are talking about a quantity in this being a quantity stress a physical quantity it has to have some units the units of stress if you look at this so we will be dealing with uh, we will define the units in si terms and then because we are talking in the engineering terms we'll have to define it into the metric terms the metric system okay so sigma is equal to p by a p has a unit of load which is newtons area has a unit of meter square so these units or the si units of sigma are newton per meter square now 1 newton per meter square this is equal to 1 pascal okay now we don't deal in units of meter when we talk about engineering applications because uh, very seldom you have mechanical engineering components in the length of meters unless and until you are a civil engineer okay when where you actually deal with beams of um, you know meter of spans so in mechanical engineering terms this length is more importantly millimeters okay so the, we need a conversion unit so 1 meter is equal to 1000 mm you need to understand this and remember this 1 meter is equal to 1000 mm Or 10 to the power 3 mm. I am using one meter square, so one meter square becomes 10 to the power 6 mm square. So if I replace the m square quantity by mm square quantity, I would get one newton upon 10 to the power 6 mm square is equal to one pascal. Now let's bring this 10 to the power 6. on to the right hand side this would give you 1 newton per mm square is equal to 10 to the power 6 pascals now what is 10 to the power 6 of anything it is mega so 10 to the power 6 pascal is 1 mega pascal so 1 newton per mm square which is how you will be uh, given the stress in the engineering term so 1 newton per mm square is equal to 1 mpa or 1 mega pascal so 1 Newton per mm square is equal to one megapascal. If you uh, go into the gigapascals, so one gigapascals, uh, one mega is equal to ten to the power uh, one giga is equal to ten to the power three mega. So this becomes one kilo newton per mm square of stress. So this is how you understand, define. and mathematically denote the quantity of stress now in the next video we'll talk about the kinds of stresses corresponding to the kinds of load now let's move on to the next video